I think that what the Māori taught me was that the, uh, the people of the land and the sense of the spirit of the land that had been present for hundreds of years and generations and the genealogy of the spirit in that place required Christians, I think, to acknowledge what was going on there and not to come at it from the point of view of a type of uh, colonization that actually doesn't assist in terms of acknowledging the dignity and truth of what is present. And I've never forgotten a Maori elder who on my on the, the day of my consecration, where a very maka of uh, God day and blessed memory, he placed this cross around my neck and he honged me, touching my nose twice. He then said to me, he said, my brother, remember the breath that you breathe and the breath that I breathe comes from the same source. The day that you and I forget that, we lose our humanity and we become even less than animals. I mean, when I came to Australia from New Zealand in 1993 to Newcastle, I mean, there, there was an element of the convict uh, colony about it and a story about Good Friday, where the convicts are being brought by these ships having been completely and utterly wounded by so this various acts of violence against them. They had been beaten and the person describes how they were put into the sea water with all these wounds and then being brought screaming onto the territory of, of Newcastle. And for me, there's a sense in which that history actually affects the way that the place was in, in some way colonized, because a number of the people who came had come from Britain with elements of violence perpetrated against them. And so they come onto this land and then they find uh, or want to define this land as somehow not having any inhabitants when there had been people there for 40,000 years. And so you get this description of terra nullis, you know, this is just land there, there's only fauna and flora there, and if there are human beings, well, they can't actually be human. So you get this sense of how Australia was settled. And we have tried to ignore it, I think, in our history. And people like myself, I think, and many, many others have recognized that until we attend to those deep wounds and present them to Christ for healing, uh, both the indigenous population, the Aboriginal population and ourselves, healing is not going to take place. And the gospel is about reconciliation and healing through the cross of Christ. And recently we had a visit where a person said uh, that he, the most that he saw about uh, Aboriginal people were in fact either on the park bench drunk or in fact, his understanding was that they were in prison or they were in the health system, desperately ill, or they were drunk on our streets. Now that's uh, one uh, understanding of an outsider coming in, observing this population, our population. And he said that he went to a fish market to, to want to meet a person there and he saw the Sibajana person. And he went up to him and he hugged him and he said, my brother, it is good to see you. Now this was an African bishop doing this. And this person just got shocked and tears began to stream down his eyes, stream down his eyes. And he looked at uh, the bishop and he said, my, nobody has ever called me brother for so long. And no one ever in my whole life has ever said to me, it is good to see you.